Hi everyone, I'm Janet Baker and on behalf of the Monticello Corporation, makers of Paper Tiger, we want to thank you for attending today's webinar. And we will be entering you into our new contest to win a Kindle Fire from Amazon. That contest ends December 31st. If you have questions during the presentation, there is a question section in the lower right corner of your panel screen where you can submit questions. Note that there is a drop down box for who you send your questions to, either to all attendees or to the pre presenters only. We, we will try our best to answer questions during the call today, but we will be posting the questions and answers on our blog under the uh, webinar category. This is also where we will be posting the webinar recording as soon as it is available. We are honored to have Ann McGurdy with us today, who will be presenting the life cycle of file management and also what she calls a webinar, demonstrating how to index your items into Paper Tiger, working through her inbox, as well as answering questions that have been asked during your webinar registration and throughout today's call. Because we know that there are different levels of Paper Tiger sisters on the call, we will be covering the basics for those that are new and then lean toward more instructions and we'll try to cover as much as possible within the hour allotted. Of course, it is impossible to give every detail and address every workflow issue in a one-hour webinar. The custom details are what you need and services for, and later today she will be giving you details on a special she has available for you. Now let me tell you a little bit about Ann McGurdy. She is CEO and founder of Strategize and Organize. Ann is a professional speaker, productivity and organizational coach, and author of the book, uh, of the book Lost in Your Own Office, and a contributing author to Speaking Your Truth, Courageous Stories from Inspiring Women, Volume 2. Anne shows people how to work more effectively with less effort. Her entrepreneurial upbringing and corporate background mesh with her experience to get results for her clients. Anne's company, Strategize and Organize, improves productivity for individuals as well as organizations of all sizes and within all industries. And something we learned recently when conducting an interview with her, she guarantees results based on the agreement you make with her before she begins work. You simply can't beat that along with the special she is currently offering. And if you sign up before midnight tonight, you'll receive a free copy of both of her books. Now, just a, a little summary of what she's offering in that special is uh, you'll receive a 30-day uh, coaching program to assess your organization, create the right plan customized for the way you work, identify the right tools, and create a plan for maintenance. Um, and this is all for $297. Um, and, and this $297 program includes a one-hour weekly one-on-one -on -one phone call with, with a total of four and an unlimited email uh, quick questions. And this package is regularly $1,500 for a three-month program. That's quite a deal. And again, if you sign up before midnight tonight, you'll receive a free copy of both of her books. If you want to learn more about Anne and her services, please visit her website at www.strategizeandorganize.com. She may be in Colorado, but she's nationally recognized as an expert and works with people in person and virtually throughout the U.S customize a system to help make their lives more productive and organized. Also, if you do not already have Paper Tiger, you can purchase from Anne's affiliate link, which I will copy into the chat section for you to pick up. And I will also be pasting her contact information into the chat section. I'm sending her um, Paper Tiger uh, affiliate link as we speak now, so you can pick that up. Uh, since we provide these webinars to you for free, this will help offset her time. Anne, hello, welcome, and thank you so much for your time and dedication to teaching others how to use Paper Tiger more effectively and productively. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much, and thank you for the wonderful introduction and 
and the, the plugs for what I do and what I offer to people. For all of you who are attending today's call, thank you so much. Um, I realize that as we're getting into the busy holidays and as in any time, your time is one of the most valuable resources that you have. So taking your time out today to, spend, to learn about using the paper tiger, I want to make as effective and as efficient as possible so that you walk away with at least one tidbit today of what you can do to go forward getting organized using the paper tiger. Um, we have about 30 people on the call today and I'm really happy to see that we have 30 people. That's great. And as Janet said, there is a chat section on the bottom right corner of your GoToWebinar information. And please go ahead and put your questions in there so that throughout the um, webinar, if there's, if there's something we can address, I would love to address them specifically for you. Um, you know, a little bit about the people who are on today's call. We always do a quick little survey so we have an idea of you know, what our users are or, or the people who are just what you're interested in. And we found out that 17, so um, a little bit more than half of you, are currently using the Paper Tiger. Seven of those um, individuals have been using for less than a year and two for two years and seven have used it for four years or more. So we do have some pretty dedicated Paper Tiger users. Now I am curious though, um, with those people who've been using it for seven years or more, um, uh, you know, what are issues that are coming up that are making you um, wanting to continue to learn more about using the Paper Tiger? Um, if you've gotten some great new ideas or innovative ways of using it and you'd like to share with our audience, Put that in the chat section and we'll share that with them as well. For those of you, okay, going forward, um, do you use paper tigers to organize things other than paper? And nine people said they're just not even sure how to do this. So I will go through today um, something I've done with a client this past week, um, which was referring to their to do list. So I'll use an example of a to do list. And then um, also, I want to note. Um, refer to like holiday items, your holiday um, holiday um, ornaments, decorations, etc. So that's how to organize something other than paper. Okay, and another was, are you planning or have you already started a process to go paperless? And more than a third, nine, um, not more than a third, nine people um, have decided, um, haven't decided yet whether they're going paperless. And 13, so almost half, have planned to um, organize both paper and digital. So we have a pretty big mix of people here. And knowing the mix of people that we have, I think it's important for you to hear that so that when you're listening to uh, my webinar and seeing what we're going to go through, um, you'll understand why I really don't go into depth about a lot of things because there are some very new users on the, on the presentation and I don't want to go way over their heads. And for the people who are experienced, I want to at least be able to touch on their questions. All right. So um, for those of you who have not seen the Paper Tiger, once you um, have gone to my affiliate link that Janet has listed here, and you've purchased the, on, um, the online Paper Tiger, this is what your initial sign-in screen will look like. So you'll be signing into the Paper Tiger, and you will have a, a, a WAP, excuse me, a, an app, a web, huh, there's a word, WAP, a, a, a web address to go to the app, thepapertiger.com. You will sign in with an email that you want to use for this account, and you will select a password that will be yours to use for the account. You go ahead and you sign in. And some of the basics here with Paper Tiger. Um, what I am showing you is my live strategize and organize um, Paper Tiger account. And when, I, when you have a Paper Tiger um, online account, one of the things I um, am often asked is um, people get a little confused with what is a database? Now, a database 
is what you're going to set up as your original set of files. And when I set up um, files, let's use for instance, I'm going to use um, the Paper Tiger webinar is going to be the database that we're going to set up. As you can see, I've got other databases and I'm just going to talk about them in general before we go into one of them. The, the specific one of strategize and organize files is a database of all of my business files so that when you go into my office and whether it's, um, it's, whether it's files that are in my actual physical office or in a storage area or um, something that I keep in a file box in my car, that is considered my database of all of my business files. So if I am going to look for an item in that uh, database for those files, it will search only in that database. But if I created another database, for, as I highlight right here, Anne's office files, when you go to search later for files in Anne's home office, it will not go into the database of strategize and organize because they are two separate databases. Uh, okay, so there's a clarification to why when you are setting up your files to maximize the, the use of the Paper Tiger search engine, you maintain all your files within one database. So the Paper Tiger would say create a new database and you would define the name of the database and we're going to call it today's database Paper Tiger Webinar. Let's see, what's today's date? 12-15. 2011, create a new database, and you will see that it created a database right here, Paper Tiger Webinar 12-15-2011. So when you go to open up the database, the Paper Tiger methodology is that you set up locations. And locations are um, where you function, where you put files. Physically, where do you put them? And most people have several different locations. Those may be the files to the right of them or the left of them sitting at their desk drawer. It may be a four drawer lateral file cabinet um, down the hall. And all of those are considered locations. I'm going to go back to my other database right now because I want to give you an example of what I have already set up. Okay. My, for, in general, most people have what we call action files. Now, a way of thinking with the Paper Tiger is I like clients to think about the papers that they're going to file in four different ways. You have files that are actionable, so those are anything that are current or um, current projects or things that you refer to often. And those are the files that are going to be located in the most convenient place to you. So that, if you're right-handed, it'll be to the drawer to your right, and if you're left-handed, that might be the drawer to the left. Usually, you only have about 30 files in that drawer. So that, that's what we consider our action files. If someone has more than 30 action files, chances are when you look at those individual files, there's really nothing active in it. It's really things that they think they need, need handy, but gener generally they're really more so what we call reference files. And reference files are those files that are not referenced off it, often, yet they're necessary to have available. This might be your auto insurance policy. It might be a, um, a contract with the client. It may be um, historical data for an event that you um, went to. Now you want to keep them and they're not in a format where you want to have them, them scanned into your system, uh, but you still want to keep them 
and it's not necessary for them to be at that first drawer closest to you, but you want them to still be close enough to your, um, your, your office so that you can grab them if you need them, say, every couple of months or maybe once a year. When you're setting, now I'm going to go through, the, you can see I've got several different other locations, but for um, sake of going through our webinar this morning, I'm just going to focus on the action files and the reference files. I'm going to set up a new location to show you how I set up that action file. We're going to call this today action, and we're going to call it action and I'm going to put an exclamation point on it uh, to distinguish it from the one that we have set up already. And when you go ahead and you describe where that action file drawer is going to be, and you'll say it'll be the top drawer in Anne's desk on the right. And the capacity is going to be how many files do you think you're going to put in that location? So say that this was a small office and I was only going to do maybe 20 files in that, that drawer. We're going to go ahead and add this location. And you can see that the Paper Tiger now added that new location and used the definition of um, what, where that was and how many files were in there. Now, why? let me go back and say, why is it important to put a description in there? And the reason it's helpful is that the, one of the main advantages of the Paper Tiger is that not only is it convenient for you to find files, but it's convenient for others as well. So that later down the line, if somebody is looking for a file, they will know that the file is in your action drawer, but they have no idea what that means. But by going into the Paper Tiger, you have defined where that action drawer is, so they're not wandering aimlessly around wondering where that is. For example, here was the reference location that we had made up at another webinar, and the description was that these are located in the conference room and the files are locked. And maybe another um, reference would have been made to update that location and say files in, are locked and Susie uh, Susie has the keys. When you give that kind of description to others, it makes it easier for them to work with your files if you're not available. Once you've set up your location, for instance, we just set up the action location, then you're going to have a blank database for all of the numbers of folders that you have requested the system to um, add. So we said 20 files. So you now have room to add 20 files. OK, so imagine that you now have a blank drawer that has room to accept 20 files. Now, one of the things that holds people up is that they, they don't feel like um, making new labels every time there's a new file. And that's what makes them have piles of paper around because they feel like it's too much work to make those files. With the Paper Tiger, they thought about that. And what they have is a, 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 a section here where you can print the tabs and labels for the files that you want to um, start um, organizing. So we set up the action, to, action file drawer here. And you'll see that it picked up the numbers 1 through 20. And you can customize it if you only need a certain section of files to be printed out. The program is set up to be, um, uh, it works compatibly with Avery file folders. You can do self-cut tabs, which is just a little bit more work that you can use on just a piece of paper and stick it into um, the file, into Pendaflex folder tabs. But I always recommend that people go with the Avery file folders, labels 5167. There's about 80, I think there's 80 she, um, stickers on those labels. And you take those sticker labels and put them on the inserted tabs that come in the package of Appendiflex hanging file folders. And then those white hard 
um, this white hard inserts, you use these stickers and put those on those, and then you insert them into the um, the Pendelex hanging file folder. So we're going to go ahead and choose that we're going to use those labels, and then we're going to generate the tabs. And here we have what I named the location and the number. And as you can see, it's action one through action 20. And now you will have all 20 labels to go stick onto those um, perforated indexes that go into the, the, the labels for the Pentaflex files. So now what you have is, oh, excuse me. Now what you have is your, um, your tabs all ready to go. Hang on a second. I don't know why I do that. Every Anne. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. We we lost your you audibly for just a, a couple of minutes there. That's why I was trying to call you to see uh, what happened. So. Are we here? Yep. Am I back? You're back. <laughs> okay. Well, that was darn to saying. Where did where did you lose me? We lost you when you closed out and then opened back up, and then I I didn't hear anything. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Well. All right. Let's say we're back. Right. All right, so once you've inserted your labels, um, you are now ready to start filing in your action drawer. So now that you have an action file drawer, I want you to think about the piles of paper that you have on your desk. And when you're looking at the piles of paper on your desk, I'm going to go back to the locations. You think about, um, I heard the acronym once of um, FAT. And then I've added the word T. So you're thinking about F is for file, which is for reference. A is for action. So those would be things that you would put into an action file. And then T is for toss, which are for things that you're no longer going to keep. And then another T would be for timed, which would be things that you would put into a tickler file folder. So I am going to show you how we have your action file here, your reference files here, and you're going to go through your pieces of paper that are on your desk. So I have here what I have is I, I got some mail, in the, I got something in the mail, and it's from Deluxe Checks. So this is what this is, is it's a piece of mail from Deluxe Checks saying that we need to order some new checks. Well, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a file under the action files and we are going to call it deluxe checks. And we're going to put in the keywords um, of, of office supplies. And there's an action date saying that if you order it um, by December 30th, you'll get a special price. So I'm going to put a reminder date of 1226 on there and go ahead and put it into my paper tiger that I have this paperwork for deluxe checks to order supplies and there's going to be a reminder from the paper tiger telling me that I need to order it on the 26th. I'm going to now go back to something called the database preferences here because when I just refer to um, that date of 1226 we have a horizon that we can put for our reminders in Paper Tiger. If you use your Paper Tiger system occasionally, like maybe once or twice a week, it might be helpful to have a, a reminder horizon of seven days, which means that my action date of 1226 would start to pop up on 1219 or 1220, six, seven days before that actual action date. So that is going to be really helpful for me to know that when I get that reminder, then I will open up that file and see that's where I've, I've um, filed the information to order those checks. And I will have a reminder here of office supplies. And I can also update in my notes to take advantage of order special by December oops, 31st. So now we have, we've gotten that piece of paper off our desk. I'm not going to forget about it because I've put in a reminder date. And when the reminder date comes up, I will know what to do with it. All right. Now, say for instance, it's December 27th, and I have now placed the order and I'm essentially done with it. I'm, I don't need it to be in my action drawer anymore. And most people just usually just kind of leave it there, which is now causing us to use up very valuable real estate in our desk. So with the Paper Tiger, what you want to do is choose that file. Now this is on December 26th or 27th after you've placed the order. And then you're going to go ahead and transfer it to another location, which would be your reference file drawer. And this is a drawer that I mentioned that might be down the hall. And you no longer want to um, keep it in your action drawer, but you want to keep it in case you want to reference in three months what you ordered when they, they actually come in. And the action date for this might be January say 30th, a month after you ordered it. And we're going to go ahead and move this item to the reference drawer. And you will physically move it from your action items over to your reference drawer. Now, as I just said that, I was saying it was moving from the action drawer to a reference drawer. But it's not showing it out of here yet. And it's showing that it is, there's a transfer pending. So that means we actually have something that is going to be moving from this location to another. And how you actually move it is you go into the tab that says Confirm, and you can go ahead and look at your action item of deluxe checks. You're confirming it's going to move from the action area to the reference files. Confirm it. Go back to the action lay area, and you can see that it is no longer in my action file drawer. But if you jump over to the location of the reference files, you will see that all the information for your deluxe checks has now moved into your reference file drawer. And again, I've left an action date of January 30th, 2012, 
And you may at this time want to edit it and say re refer to file and original order. And if everything is OK, purge file. Or remind file, remind tickler to follow up in October. And then you can change the action date to October 2012. So what you have is not only a place to um, organize all your files, but you're creating yourself essentially a to-do list of how to manage what is in your files. Because all too often people say that they have out of sight and out of mind makes them a little bit afraid of how to file their paperwork, and that's one of their intimidations of using the paper tiger. But the paper tiger doesn't leave it out of sight, out of mind because it also has the functionality of using reports. Once you go through and list everything that needs to be filed off your desk, you can create an item list report of everything in all the locations that you have set up. So say after your day of filing, you have set up your action files and your reference files. And say, for instance, you also created a box of archive files that you didn't want to keep in any specific location immediately local and you may want to give something into the garage or somewhere else. So you want to print a report of everything that's in the action and reference files and the archive files. And you will see here that you now have a physical report which will make it visually obvious where you have put all of your files. Now this is really handy and if you then uh, put it in your usually in the front of your file drawer and tape it there often that's really helpful. You can print each page individually so put maybe one on the front drawer of the action file drawer, um, put a list of the um, one page of the reference drawer and on the archive box you can list you can paste this list on there as well. Another part of the reporting function is something that I love this time of year. And as a matter of fact, I've got um, two clients booked for the last week of the month on the 28th and 29th because what we do is we go through and use the function of the file cleanout report. I absolutely love this report because what you can do is you can go through every single file that you have. And so many people, when they think about all their files and having to clean them up, they think, what, ugh, what a chore. Let's throw in our sweats and just work hard all day. Well, with the Paper Tiger, you can just run a file cleanout report. And what you can do is take a, a visual review of what you have in each of those locations. And you'll have all the keywords defining what's in there. And with this report, you can identify you know, what you think, maybe I need to review this because I don't really recall what this means. Or you can choose and say, it's time to toss it. Or it's time to transfer it to archive. Or transfer it to maybe another person. Or none, and you just leave it there. So when you go through this file cleanout report, not only can you make a decision with what you want to do, you can also give it to someone else who interacts with your files and get their input as well. And they physically do not even need to be near your files. All they have to do is see this report. And then they can make a decision as well. But that's where this one column here, review, comes in handy, is if they want to see the file, at least you know that these are the only ones that you need to pull in order for them to help you clean up your, your files. Also, when you're using a file cleanup report like this, you can do all these transactions and review them, but you can also delegate it now to someone. Because once you, um, you've made the decision, it's really easy to maybe pass it on to someone, even some, somebody who might be looking for some part-time work, or a professional organizer can help you with this. And you can make decisions to 
move all these files, and update your Paper Tiger system based on this one report. So if you haven't used the cleanout report yet, I highly recommend that you use it for the year end because this is the best time to take a look at what you've got for your files for the year and not have to create new storage ideas and containers for next year because chances are you can get rid of some things. Oops, I just lost my system again. Let me open it up again. I was just going to go to the next area. In the meantime, while I'm pulling things up, Janet, do we have any questions on the line? Um, yes, I was just getting ready to uh, answer one. Um, Michael, one of the attendees, wants to know how much time uh, does it take to uh, typically set up? Several weekends, two months? Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> that's such a great question, Michael. And that's what I, I think is so overwhelming to people is um, when I work with clients, I, have, uh, I can have pictures of the biggest mess of an office and I have a program, what I call a miracle in a day, because with two people, you essentially can get your entire office set up into the paper tiger in a day. And um, I know that seems like so little time, but the truth is, if you are very quick about making decisions, about each piece of paper, whether it's action or reference, and keep it that simple. Action, reference, or toss. And then you can go ahead and get it all entered into the system quickly. Uh, so I also say if you have a lot of drawers of files that you want to go through and inventory those, consider about two hours per drawer. Um, if you were inventorying just files that you have existing, it's going to be about two hours per drawer. Sometimes it's a little bit longer if you're doing it yourself, um, and it's also longer if you get emotional about it and look at a file and say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to deal with this. You, um, so I really encourage you that when you're doing this, you do it very systematically and kind of robotic because you don't want to get caught up in the emotions of what's in the drawer and that'll help the process go a lot faster. If you need some help doing this, um, I encourage you to um, work with someone in your office. If you work alone, um, this is part of what I do as consulting. I, I actually do this even virtually. We can do it on Skype and I can go through your office drawer files with you and help you make decisions on each piece of paper and get it going. It's amazing what you can accomplish even in just a couple of hours. And so and that's why I kind of laugh, you know, if people think it's going to take hours and or weekends and it doesn't have to be that difficult. Okay, um, as we just asked that one question, I was reminded that Someone had asked about organizing things other than um, their paper. And I just did an article on organizing holiday stuff. So your holiday ornaments, how can you organize those? And what you can do, I know this is based on a residential environment, but you can create a location, a new location, and call it holiday ornaments or just say holiday, just holiday. And you'll have holiday, say, holiday box. And the description is, and it may be that, that, green, that green and red box from the container store. And capacity, just make up a random number of 100. And you're going to create a new location called Holiday Box. You're going to open up that box, and after you've put away all your decorations for the year, what you're going to do is you're going to list. You're going to say Holiday Cards 2011. And that might be just a box, and you might say keywords, and these are um, all of my cards from friends and family. Go ahead and hit Add to Holiday Box 1. You may have a special candle that somebody gave you. And you might say, say it's that joy, joy candle. And you'll say gift, 
gift from Anne. Put that in holiday box number two. You may have a special scented, I have these special scented candles that I love, and these are my Ralph Lauren holiday candles. And I put that into holiday box number three. So what you're doing is you're itemizing everything that is in that box, and when you are closing out your Paper Tiger program later in the year, you may decide like in February, you know, those uh, Ralph Lauren candles that I had were so nice. They had a nice scent. I have no idea where I put them. So you can go in, type in the word Ralph, and see that you have stored those candles in your holiday box. Now, I didn't indicate where that holiday box was when I set up the location, so you'll see why that was so important. So let's go back and edit it and description and say this box is stored in the basement locker. Key is in the kitchen junk drawer. We all have junk drawers, even organizers. Save the changes so you know where it is now. So that's how you would organize something other than paper. Do we have any other questions that may have come up? Um, when you were showing the, um, the uh, year-end file cleanout report, uh, Scott says, nice, didn't know that. So that was a nice show there. Um, glad Great. you showed that. Um, he also wants to know what you charge hourly. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, Scott, I, I suggest that you might contact Anne uh, directly and uh, so y'all can discuss exactly what you need and then she can tell you what, um, what she can uh, do for you. All right, um, thank, thank another you. Question, another uh, question is, how about scan documents and emails using both electronic and paper copies sometimes? Okay, now um, that opens up a new door um, when it comes to scanning information and use, finding electronic information. As some of you may know, is the Monticello company has been in the development and beta phase of a new product called the Digital Tiger, um, which will work with the Paper Tiger and with using the um, the ecosystem, the um, the system of, of Google to um, file all of your electronic information and your email. Uh, what I'd like to preface this with, now that I've mentioned that, the whole um, trick to getting organized and finding electronic information is based on understanding the methodology of where you put things. And if you start um, uh, putting things in places uh, with good keywords, then you're able to find them. And, and that, as I say that, I, it sounds a little bit convoluted. Um, what I, because when you have the Google ecosystem as a search engine for finding electronic files, the words don't matter what you use because the, the power of a Google search engine will find documents as you store them no matter what words you use to label them. And let me give you an example here. In my action file, um, I may have had a piece of paper here for a um, phone company dispute. And what this was is it was copies of bills and notes of conversations and business cards from individuals from ABC Company. Now that was a physical file that I have in my action drawer. And until I get that resolved, it's going to stay in, a, in paper format. But say, for instance, you are going 100%, you're going hopefully 100% paperless at some point, uh, and you're going to want to scan this information into your, your um, hard drive of your computer, and ideally you're going to be working with the digital tiger and uploading it to Google. The trick is most people take this copy of the bills and the notes, and they scan it into their hard drive. But just like their paper file system, their 
electronic system on their hard drive becomes really messed up and disorganized because they're not using a methodology like file, actions, and reference as you use in the paper tiger. So they need to have an organized architecture in their um, hard drive. For instance, my folders, uh, my bills, my, um, <laughs> my documents of correspondence. And if you don't have a good logical order there, it's going to be very hard to find where you put all this. So th where we're going next year is I'm going to be teaching people more about how to use the methodology of the paper tiger for their paper and using the digital tiger to scan their um, paper information into an electronic format using the Google ecosystem so that their, all of their documents can be OCR, which means optical character recognition, so that once it is scanned, the words within those documents will be findable with the Google search engine uh, mechanism. As I said, we have people of all different levels in this call today, so that may have gone over some of your heads in understanding it, and if you have any further questions about it, let me know. Um, but in the meantime, I want you to know that having the basic understanding of how to organize your paper will make it a thousand times easier when you're going paperless because your mind will, will be thinking much more logically and the paper tiger trains your mind to think very differently and much more efficiently in an organized way for how to file paper away. And as you can see, other stuff as well. Do we have any other questions that have come up? I have one, I have actually one here, John. I, I'm just looking at one here that um, someone commented on their registration that they have the paper tiger yet they're still very unorganized in office on a day-to-day -day, yet they have piles and piles of paper and um, for, for that person I, you know, I just want to share a story that um, last night I was out with someone and they just recently bought my book um, Lost in Your Own Office and I say I'm flattered that he read my book and could he tell me what was one of the things that he walked away with? And he said, like everybody always says, and I said even with this webinar, if you walk away with one tidbit, it hopefully was then proven to be a successful hour. After reading my book, he said that the one tidbit that he walked away from was taking 15 minutes at the end of every day to put your systems back in place. And when you're feeling, if you're still feeling or unorganized in your office day to day, this is part of where I, I'm, it's more about consulting and getting into habits. But if you take 15 minutes at the beginning of your day and at the end of the day, you, you not only clean up with an organized office, but you start off with a fresh plate. If you're one of these people that leaves the office at 5 or 6 or 7 o'clock at night, and you don't finish your current projects or put things away, you're going to be behind the eight ball again tomorrow. When you have all of your files set up in the paper tiger, what can happen is at the end of the day, you have a place to put all these pieces of paper. So right now, for instance, I have, I've got seven pages of information regarding today's webinar. So at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to go to my Paper Tiger database and I'm going to look for the word Paper Tiger. And you can see I have a reference file for Paper Tiger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and edit it and it say, no, excuse me, we're going to say notes from webinar. and take my paper from today and put it into reference file number one. And if you are to do this with all of the papers on your desk at the end of each day, tomorrow you will set up in a, be set up in an organized way. And remember, if at the end of the day 
that you didn't complete the project and you need to refer to it at another time, you can go, go in there and make sure that you update the action date to 12-27-2011, which might be the next available date that I want to refer to my notes and do something about these notes. So taking that 15 minutes at the end of each day will help you to stay on top of all those extra papers. I also want to give you a story here. And um, th this is a story when I'm speaking to audiences that I, you know, I think everyone can relate to on a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine you're wanting to start a new job or you're going out and you want to buy a new outfit and you're, you're looking for something special because you're in a new um, phase of your life and you want to improve your image. So naturally it makes sense that you want to go to a nice store and you want to um, try on some nice clothes and you find something that makes you feel amazing and you feel successful, you feel um, powerful and you just feel great about yourself. So you buy the new outfit and you come home and usually what you do is you then you know, hang it up in your closet and it looks wonderful. And tomorrow you decide you're going to wear your new outfit. So you, tomorrow morning you get the outfit, you put it on and you wear it and you feel great all day. Well that's very similar to going out, setting up your files and then the next day you use them and you're really happy that you were able to find them. Now at the end of the day, do you take off that outfit and throw it on the floor? Do you leave it on your bed or throw it over a chair? Well naturally it makes sense that if you just threw it to the side, that the next time you go to wear it, it's not going to feel so good. It may be there, but it's going to be a little bit wrinkly. It's going to be feeling a little tasseled and you're going to feel not as great as you did after that first day when you pulled it out of your closet because it's all in nice, clean, steamed order. The trick is, at the end of each day, as you would put away your files every day, you would also be putting away your suit every day or your new, um, your new outfit. You hang it back up. If it needs to be cleaned, you send it to the cleaners or you clean it. There's some maintenance involved. But that 15 minutes at the end of the day, and in the case of clothes, that 15 seconds of taking the jacket off, putting it on the nice hanger, taking the skirt off and hanging it up, and putting the blouse in the laundry basket. Those are the things that you do to maintain that beautiful new outfit that you have, creating a, a beautiful image of your, your personal style. So those few minutes transfer over to your filing. That at the end of the day, you don't leave the papers tasseled around on the chair, on the bed, on the floor, on the credenza. What you do is you take a couple of minutes and make a decision whether it's something that needs to be hung, something that needs to be steamed, or something that needs to be sent to the cleaners. It's all about making a decision to what is the next best thing to taking care of what you have and taking those steps to keep it maintained. So um, if you're one of these people that are still throwing the clothes on the floor every day, you're going to struggle with this. And it is really about changing some of your behaviors. And you know, everyone knows that, um, I don't know if everybody knows it, but I think it was Stephen Covey who said it takes 21 days to, um, to change a habit. And I'm kind of I'm disagreeing. My, my thought is habits just change over time and even if you do just a little bit every day, eventually it will change. Nothing is going to miraculously change over 21 days, but if you were to do just a little bit every day, what's going to happen is if you address a little bit of those piles of papers, even 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day, eventually all the piles will go away. The, the biggest decision you can make, though, is where is it going to go? Are you going to file it and make it something actionable and create a date to do that action? Or put it in reference? Or make the biggest decision of all and throw it out? 
And on that note of throwing it out, keep in mind the question, you know, what, are there going to be any legal circumstances as a result of you throwing it out or financial um, repercussions? If either of those may be a problem, chances are you don't want to throw it out. So those are the things you definitely want to say. But if there's not going to be any legal repercussions or financial repercussions or it's not going to be very easy to find that information again or recreate it, then you want to go ahead and file it. Okay, well those, um, do we have any more questions here? We've got about five minutes left. And I, yes, you know, and I have, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have one more question that I think you have time for is, um, Susan wants to know, what can I do to keep articles torn out of magazines to keep them in order? Oh, I did see that question. That is a great question. Okay, um, magazine articles. What I would do, if you want to keep them in order, so there's a couple of different ways to go about that. I would create a, um, you can create a, um, a file called magazine articles and say for instance um, we're going to put maybe 20 in that folder you're going to add the location and make a whole new location for magazine articles so one drawer might be for magazine articles and each folder might be an, an item name of articles on fashion and then you do another one which might be on cooking so you will have each of the individual um, topics that were important to you in the fashion in the magazine articles um, location if, if you don't have room for a whole drawer of magazine articles and you want it just to be within your reference file you go into your reference file drawer, create a new folder, and this is a new Pentaflex folder, and that will be called Magazine Articles. And you would do um, individual folders for fashion, food, technology, and this is where you would go ahead and add individual Manila folders within the Pendaflex file folders so that they are organized within that one Pendaflex folder. So you don't have to create magazine articles fashion, magazine articles food, technology. You don't have to create three or four separate different Pendaflex folders. You can put them all within that area. If they individually get too fat, then you would go ahead and you would make a new folder called magazine magazine articles fashion and you would just have the fashion ones in that reference file folder and then you would you would take you would edit the previous file and take fashion out of there and know that you've moved all of those from 8 to 9 so all of your articles are separated that way um, that was a very quick overview on how to manage articles. Uh, going forward when we go into the Digital Tiger um, we'll be able to have you scan and upload articles and I love how that works with the new Digital Tiger so um, stay tuned for that because you are going to be phenomenally organized and can access that on your smartphone if you ever want to refer to an article for instance if you're shopping and you want to refer to um, a recipe it'll be on your smartphone because you've had it digitally uploaded into the Digital Tiger. So stay tuned for that for next year. We've got some great things happening with that. Well, we're down to a minute left. Uh, for those of you who have not been able to ask any questions or if some other questions come up later, um, please email them to the Paper Tiger. And you can also contact me. I um, would love to work with you and help you implement your um, your Paper Tiger system and start out your new year completely organized and ready to go paperless so that next this time next year you won't even recognize your office because there's not good, everything is going to be so organized. So thank you all. Um, Janet, if you have any final notes, um, it, it's all yours. 
Ann, great job. We appreciate your time and the helpful tips. Um, okay, everyone, contact Ann as soon as possible to take her up on her special that she's offering for a limited time. Uh, if you're ready to get organized and have Ann help you create a system customized just for you, call or email her to get on her schedule. And again, if you get on her schedule uh, and sign up uh, before midnight tonight, you'll receive a free copy of Best of Her Books. Um, again, you can, uh, I'll paste Ann's contact information into the chat section. I'm pasting her affiliate link out right now and then her contact information right there. And so you can pick that up. Um, uh, you can contact her uh, A-M-C-G-U-R-T-Y at strategizeandorganize.com or phone her at 303-881-0174. Her website address again is www.strategizeandorganize.com. You'll be working more productive in no time. We want to thank you for attending today's webinar. And again, we do plan to post the recording on our website so you can refer back to it whenever you need to. Please feel free to give us your feedback by emailing us at sales, that's S-A-L-E-S, at thepapertiger.com. Um, our next webinar is scheduled for January 5th, so we want to wish everyone a very merry and safe holiday and happy new year. Um, Ann, did you want to add anything else? Um, no, thank you again, Janet, and happy holidays to everyone. I wish you all and your families them the very best of the season and to a happy and prosperous new year. Uh, okay, very good. Um, someone is asking me to go over and special again, so um, let me pull that up uh, right quick again. Okay. Um, again, uh, for $297, the program includes a one-hour weekly on 101 phone call with Ann. Uh, so it's a total of four in one month, four hours, uh, and unlimited email quick questions. Um, this package is regularly $1,500 for a three-month program. Uh, she will be able to assess your organization or your uh, in, in, you individually and how you work in your home or office. She will be able to create the right plan customized for the way you work. Uh, she will identify the right tools for you and create a plan for maintenance. So um, again, give her a call and, and then you can you know discuss uh, what you need from her and she can let you know what she can do for you. And again, she, she does guarantee her work and if she can't uh, do what uh, you need, she will refer you to someone, uh, to another uh, expert in, in whatever, for whatever you need. All right, thank you. All right, everyone, thanks again. We appreciate you using Paper Tiger, and again, happy holidays. All right, thank Bye you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.